We have one mission at the program. Develop better leaders and create more cohesive teams. Let's go, man. It's a race. I didn't get to a few of the questions before the end of the earlier webinar, but I wanted to be sure to circle back uh, with you all. Uh, out of respect, I appreciate having the courage to ask a question. And because of that courage, as I said, I respect courage. And I wanted to be sure uh, to answer those questions that I didn't get to earlier. As far as, you know, what part of climbing Mount Everest was mental and what part was physical? What I would highlight to you is the, the program defines tough or toughness as being able to stay mission focused. So mission focused in the face of physical, mental, and emotional adversity. And that's key. Mission focused in the face of physical, mental, and emotional adversity. Mount Everest to me, I, when, I'm in shape. I've always been in I work very hard at being in shape and, and physical fitness has been a huge part of my life for as long as I can remember. When I climbed Mount Everest, I may have been in the best physical shape of my life. Therefore, climbing it, it the amount of toughness required, it wasn't as much as you think because it was the more physically fit you are, the less physically tough you must be. Let me say that again. The more physically fit you are, the less tough, physically tough you must be. But climbing Mount Everest, I think is 95% physical, most of which is fitness. And then a part of which is toughness, okay? It's cold, you're tired, you're hungry. About 95% for me, physical. And therefore, 5% mental. But what I would highlight to you is that 5% mental piece, that's what can kill you on Mount Everest. That's what can kill you in life. That's why we must be physically and mentally tough. What I would highlight to you is I appreciate that you know, your job being a student or even being an athlete, it may not be 95 and five as teachers, as administrators, coaches, it definitely isn't 95% physical, 5% mental, but there's some proportion of our life that is physical and is mental. I mean, the sheer fact that we get up in the morning and we're tired means that there is a physical portion of our lives. So we must develop our physical and mental toughness. We have a whole class on how we do so, and we'd be happy to come back and share that entire class with you. But very briefly, how do we develop our physical and mental toughness? First, when it, as it pertains to toughness, first, get as physically fit as you can be. I don't care if you're an athlete or not. The more physically fit you are, the better life you will have, period. That's not Eric Capitula who says it. That's science that tells us that. Why? Because the more physically fit you are, the more energy you have to do those things in life that you want to do. You, the more energy you have to be a great teammate and great team leader on all the teams you're, you are on that we are privileged to be a part of. The physical toughness piece is Get as physically fit as you can, and don't be afraid to go outside when it's cold, wet, raining. Thankfully, we live in New England, so we get plenty of those opportunities. But a lot of people don't. Always remember, there is no bad weather, just soft people. Train that way. Now, the mental toughness piece of it, first, we make mental mistakes a number of different times. Two main ones, though. Number one, when we're physically tired. So you want to make fewer mental mistakes? See physical fitness. Because not only does physical fitness provide us with more energy, physiologically inside of our bodies, when we exercise, obviously our, our lungs pump harder and oxygen goes rushing through our bloodstream to our heart and to our brain first. The more oxygen in our bloodstream in our brain, the more we're able to think acutely. 
for longer. We'll make more mental, we'll make fewer mental mistakes. We'll be more mentally tough if we are physically tough. And of which, again, a large part of physical toughness is physical fitness. That's so we make mental mistakes a hundred different times. Two main ones one, when we're physically tired, exercise, right? Number two, when we're under stress or we feel pressure. What I'd like to highlight to you is in those moments, we do not rise to the occasion, but instead we fall back on the habits that we created right up until those moments. Mental toughness is a habit. Develop great habits in your life. Now, regardless of what percentage your life is, physical to mental, all of our lives are 100% emotional. All of them are. And we must be emotionally tough or resilient. And what does that mean, emotionally tough or resilient? It doesn't mean being a stoic. It doesn't mean not having any emotions. Not, not at all. Th that's unhealthy for you. It is when we, what it is though, is an emotionally tough person. We get natural human emotions like everybody else, but an emotionally resilient person, when they get these natural human emotions, they take one deep breath. That's key. They take one deep breath and they think. Think is the key word. And they think, how do I best respond to this natural human emotion that will best help my team accomplish its mission? It's not a question of not having emotions. It's having those emotions at an appropriate time that ensures mission success for your team. We all get natural human emotions. When we do so, take one deep breath and think, how do I best respond to this natural human emotion that will help my team accomplish its mission? Toughness is mission focused in the face of physical, mental, and emotional adversity. None of us are born tough. We have to develop it. That's how you do so. Now, the second question, and I got a chuckle to about it, and I love I loved it being asked, uh, and I do get this from time to time. Uh, I love talking about my family, and the question was, did I name my son Axel after Axel Rose? The answer is no, I did not. But don't let me don't let that be a reflection on my love or not of Guns N' Roses because believe me I love Guns N' Roses Axl Rose was awesome now who I did name my son Axel after is when I went to climb Mount Everest on the north side there was nobody there it was us and an Austrian climbing team and we became very good friends with each other. Great group of guys. And one of those guys, I had gone, to, my, my climbing partner and I had summited Mount Everest and now we're coming down the mountain. And now I don't wanna get into too much of the story with you, but you typically will need 10 to 12 days of good weather to summit Mount Everest. Well, my partner and I, we didn't get that. We got six, five to six days. And we had to decide, hey, are we going to go for the summit or not? Well, we decided to do so. And we did achieve the summit and get back down safely. But in the five and a half days it took us, we slept in total six hours. Six hours and five and a half days. We were moving almost continuously for five and a half days. During that time, we ate two packets of ramen noodle, two packets, individual packets of oatmeal, and some handfuls of chocolate candies. We're coming back down the mountain, exhausted, physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. And the last part of the climb on the north side of Mount Everest is coming down the Rongbuk Glacier. It leads down into base camp. It's basically a hike. Well, we, it's nighttime. We can see the lights on in the tents down in base camp. And as we stumble down the Rongbuk Glacier, I see I come around a corner and there's a headlamp there there's a light on and immediately I think wait are these people climbing up to advance base camp and what 
Uh, and what I quickly realized was, no, they're not climbing up. It's, it's another climber. So I keep climbing and I come up and there's one of these Austrian climbers who had been listening on, on the radio from base camp and knew that we were coming down the glacier and what we had just accomplished. And he had hiked two miles up the wrong buck glacier. I came up to him and he was there and he handed me an ice cold Coca-Cola. And I took a sip of that Coca-Cola and it was the single greatest thing that's ever entered my mouth. And I looked at him and said, Axel, I'm naming my first son after you. And that's where Axel Capitula got his name from an Austrian Red Bull extreme skier named Axel Naglich, who to this day is a very good friend of mine. Thank you again. I really appreciate the opportunity that I had this afternoon to interact with you. And I hope that we get an opportunity to see each other real soon.